Hi guys, Dane here. Uh, I'm wearing my hood inside because I'm super cool and also because it's cold, basically. And today I'm filming a belated uh, April Tarden Danes indie read along. It's May the 8th at the time of filming this. So as you can tell, I actually read these a little while back, but I will remember what I can of them. I can remember which order they were for that for a start, so that's good. So we'll begin with the first one. This is the Station 17 Chronicles written by Ollie Jacobs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the blurb for this one. I know I do that anyway, but this one really kind of gives you a feel for it. Basically, it's uh, it's almost two novellas and a short story, but all surrounding the Station 17. And this will give you a blurb of each of those stories. So Station 17. It stands on top of the world where the environment is unforgiving and the world you once knew is very far away. Built for scientific study, it soon gathered a reputation for something more chilling. Madness, paranoia, violence. Those who come to Station 17 are never the same again, if they even get to leave. The Station 17 Chronicles tells three tales from the far off research rig. Underneath follows the story of ex-cop Terry King, whose demons awaken when he goes below the surface of the station. With plenty to prove to himself and those around him, Terry's secondment to Station 17 becomes his chance of redemption. Staines follows a different kind of man in Kent Hawks. The young, brash co-CEO of Hawks Carpenter, the company that owns Station 17, he's determined to show that the facility is not the death trap people claim. With a motley crew pieced together by his own hubris, Kent travels to Station 17 and finds that some of its ghosts may be real. With Station 17 telling the final fate of the station itself, the Station 17 Chronicles tells the whole story about the ill-fated facility, with imagery that will stay with you for a long time and twists that will make you gasp, dare you step aboard Station 17. Now, I will actually agree there that a lot of the imagery and just the idea of this station have kind of stuck with me. I didn't really enjoy reading it too much at the time, I'm going to be honest. Um, as with kind of most indie books, really, there were a few kind of weird layouty bits and um, spelling and grammar mistakes, but not too many. I think it was the pacing I didn't like too much. I did like Stains, the second one. I thought that one was really solid. Uh, I don't know. I think it was a good idea, though, as well to you know to publish all three in one volume. I gave this, I gave it a three out of five. Uh, I did start reading this as like my main book and switched it out as my bedtime book and read like twenty five pages at a time. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I just didn't really get into it. I don't think I was in the right mood for it at the time because I can't think of anything solid. Especially looking back on it now, I can't think of anything solid that would be a good enough reason to not pick it up. But there was just something about it that just didn't absorb me as much as uh, Jacobs' other books. So I would definitely recommend reading Ollie Jacobs. I just would say maybe don't start with this one. If the uh, premise in the blurb sounds interesting, pick up one of his other books. Probably, I would say, uh, one of the Kirk Sandblaster books would probably be a good place to start. And, uh, yeah, and then move on to this from there. So next up, we're going to go for another Ollie Jacobs book. This is Film It Cuts 2, Luchador Monkey Crisis. And uh, this has got a foreword by Michael Williams as well. I believe there are yeah 10 stories in this. And I really enjoyed Film It Cuts number one. I gave that like a 4.5 out of 5. And it was one of my best books of the quarter. This one, not so much. I still gave it like a 3.5 out of 5. Maybe a 3.75 out of 5. Um, this was much more though in keeping with what I expect from a short story collection. So the reason that I gave such a high rating to the first one. Was that every story in it was just amazing. <laughs> like all of the concepts were just really well thought out. Concepts really well executed. Just the whole thing was really well done. This was more like what you you usually get with the short story collection where there were a few hits, a few misses, you know? But there's still plenty of food for thought and uh, quite a range of different genres, sometimes in the same story as well. So I'll read you the blurb. Why has a man woken in a cage in the sky? What dark secret does a popular social network hide? And who exactly are the dead men? Ollie Jacobs is back with 10 more yarns of horror, joy and intrigue in Luchador Monkey Crisis, the second volume in the Film It Cuts series. With a lot more twists, shocks and stings in these tales, this follow-up to Sunshine and Lollipups is darker than a singularity of tar. Oh, and naturally includes luchadors, monkeys and a lot of crises. Sorry, a lot of crisis. <laughs> Those who, have dared read Le Those who have dared read Luchador Monkey Crisis have said that it is a lot of fun, but warned that it visits a lot of dark places. If that's not enough to tempt you down the rabbit hole, then think about the sociopath sinners and suave rogues you're missing out on. So here in this collection we have, like I said, a foreword by Michael Williams. We have Checkmate, Happy as Larry, Nought to 60, In the Room with Rosie, The Birdcage, Sense 3 and 4, and I believe that one was more almost like a poem. Let me find it. Yeah, I'm going to read you Sense 3 and 4. 
dead. I'm dead. I have to be because because this this is hell. One day I was walking. Next day I'm here. Dark room, bright light, and someone something against me. Spoke a lot. Now nothing. I think. I think he's dead. Dead as well. We're all dead. All dead because because this this isn't life. This is torture. This is nightmare. This is hell. I'm dead. I'm dead. I have to be. What do you see? I don't know. What do you see? I don't know. Do you see anything? I don't know. Do you see visions? I don't know. Do you see shapes? What he wants? Do you see? I don't know. Colours? I don't know. People? Why he does this? Memories? I don't know. Things? I don't know. Anything? I don't know. Anything at all? I don't know. In there? I don't know. In the light? Anything anymore? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Next time? I don't know. We'll try again. I don't know. So yeah, and it's like, you know, pretty cool format in there. Uh, the Legend of the Rogue, Sanctuary, uh, Feed the Troll, Ringside with the Kid, and then the Dead Men. And it was the Dead Men in particular, uh, which really stood out to me, I think, from this collection. But I'm not going to tell you who the Dead Men are, because that's in the blurb, so you have to read it to find out. But yeah. Okay, and then we have Video Nasties by Duncan Ralston. And as you can see, the whole kind of gimmick of this is like it's a VHS tape sort of style thing. Uh, some stories can kill and what I like as well is this uh, cover here even with like the VHS with the hand coming out and the tentacles This is like directly referenced by one of the stories And so you can tell that the cover artist has at least familiarized themselves with that one story, you know uh, It's out by shadow work publishing again. It's got this VHS stuff on the sides pretty cool rear as well Duncan Ralston's video nasties. This is a test. This is only a test Italian director Niccolo Finelli's lost film comes alive when the Maven of the Macabre is released after 20 years of VHS imprisonment. New hire Annie Watkins' preemptive obituaries at Live at Five News seem to be killing off famous people. A used delivery van causes Katie and Gavin's lives to take an unimaginable wrong turn into very dark territory. A teen orphan with a unique ability is held captive in a secret government lab forced to submit to their whims. Vacation has become a grotesque part of the Easter festivities in a small English, English town. These are just a handful of the 16 dark tales that await you in Video Nasties. Tune in, sit back and turn up the terror. But don't touch that dial, it just might kill you. So I'm going to read you here the uh, the list of contents. What I will say, again, the interior of this is just really well done. I've, I, I've got a lot of respect for... I've read a few of these books now that are Duncan Ralston's from Shadow Work Publishing and they certainly they do uh, the interiors justice. Um, so we've got here like clips on tape and then that's your index. So how to kill a celebrity. Chompers, which was about like haunted false teeth. Well, like haunted haunted teeth implants. A guy had his teeth sort of knocked out and then he got these implants, but they were haunted. Mental, dead man walking. Sorry, dead men walking. The eye at the door. Cuttings, bus driver man. A dark pine story. In the shadow of the masters. My protector. Sanctuary. Do not shake or rattle. Stray. He is risen. Squirm. Sharp. And then, of course, video nasties at the end. And, uh... This is interesting because a lot of the stories stand out to me. I read this um, right after reading Night Shift by Stephen King. And this is, has the same thing uh, as uh, the film It Cuts books where all of them, they've got hits and misses, you know. Uh, it's not like a collection where every one of them is amazing. And I actually think this one had the edge over Stephen King's uh, Night Shift collection. Just because with Night Shift there were some classics like Children of the Corn, but... They're rivaled by some of these, like Video Nasties, for example. It stands up against it. And um, and I just think the weaker of the King stories weren't as well weaker than the weaker of Duncan Ralston's stories. So I gave this like a 3.75. And this is probably out of the three, the one I would recommend the most. But, uh, you know, it's uh, indie, indie books. So uh, it's always good to support ind indie authors. Also, I have books. So if you'd like to buy some of those, that would also be appreciated. So, yeah. That is what I read in April for Tarden Danes Indie Read Along. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.